Uh, okay, guys, let's kick it off. We have um, script training today, guys. So today what I want to do is the I want to pull up a, um, a script. We're going to watch a little training video, and then we're going to role play the script. And this one is for when a client asks you for part of your commission back. Who's run into that when you have a buyer that wants part of your commission back, wants a kickback from you, wants you to credit them, something like that, right? It's pretty common. Um, you'll see that there's different ways to go about it. So we're going to watch a training video from Kevin Ward. Does anybody know who Kevin Ward is? Anybody ever watch any of his training stuff? It's pretty good. Um, real estate trainer, really good at scripts. So first part of this training will be we're going to watch this uh, YouTube video where he kind of breaks it all down. And then the second part, we're just going to role play it. We're just going to go one by one, just hitting everybody and giving everybody a chance to kind of role play it um, and see if we can make it through everyone. So let me pull this up. And for those of you guys that don't know, like I said, Kevin Ward is a real estate trainer. Um, he has a ton of videos on YouTube, really good stuff. I've watched a lot of his things. Um, I like his style, but check him out if you need some training. Can you guys, let me know if you can hear this. You're working with a buyer. Can you hear it? And your buyers ask you to give them a part of your commission. What do you do? What do you say? And how do you tell them no. Hi there. My name is Kevin Ward, the founder of Yes Masters Real Estate Success Training, helping you get more yeses and more successes in your business and in your life. Now, I have had this twice already in 2021. I've had two people ask me, how do you deal with this? Buyers ask you to give them a part of your commission. What do you do? And then I saw it on a Facebook group uh, for realtors. This question came up. Now, in it's very interesting to me in the Facebook group, when it was asked, there were literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that answered, how do you say no when somebody asks you to give them, on a buyer asks you to give them a part of your commission? So first thing I want to do is talk about the, what I call the stupid answers. And then we're going to talk about what is the best answer of how you can actually say no to giving away a part of your commission and yet do it in a way that adds value to them and uh, builds the relationship rather than distances the relationship. So let's first talk about the stupid answers. This is what you don't ever want to say. So number one answer, the number one stupid answer, will you give me a part of your commission? I'm the buyer. And the stupid answer is no, no, uh, no, 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 no. And I literally have seen hundreds of agents answer that. This is why you don't want to go to Facebook groups uh, and depend on their wisdom to help you learn how to get more yeses. Now, does no handle the objection? And the answer is yes, it handles the objection. The problem is it also puts them on the defensive. It may end the conversation, but it also ends the collaboration. It's no longer you working with them. It's not you working against them. They're trying to negotiate for your value. And so the worst thing you can ever do, when any objection, no is the worst. Um, well, let's just say this. I've got another video that's going to be posted in the next week. I'll post the link as soon as we get it up. I'll post the link down below in the comments here on the dumbest objection handler ever. So if you're watching this video and it's been up a week, you'll have a link down below on the dumbest objection handler ever uh, on why no is the worst thing you can ever say and how to deal with it. Okay? So no, don't use, don't just say no, I won't do that. Okay. It just ends the conversation and it definitely hurts the relationship. The second stupid answer for how to handle this objection is to say, I can't. No, I can't do it. I would love to, but I can't. I can't because it's illegal. I can't because my broker won't allow it. I can't because my, my commission is not mine. It belongs to the broker or whatever it is. All of that is either incorrect, inaccurate, or just basically BS. But the worst thing is it makes it doesn't make them want to work with you. You say, well, I would, but I can't because you're not a lot, you don't have a license, so I can't give you a referral. Well, one, that is legally inaccurate. And yet I saw on the, the Facebook groups when I've seen this question answered, asked, countless agents will go like, well, you don't have a license, I can't give you money. Well, that is not 
actually true. What almost every state in the United States, and this is strictly for the United States and North America, is that it, you cannot give a referral fee in most states to an unlicensed person. Well, your buyer is not a, is not a referral. This, they are a principal in the transaction. And a principal in the transaction, you can pretty much do anything you anything you want as long as all parties are aware and so forth. Now, I'm not, this is not legal advice. I am not an attorney, but that's just the truth. That's just the way it is. So don't ever say, well, I can't because you're not licensed and I can't give referral fees or I can't give money to somebody who doesn't have a license. That's not true. And if you say, well, I can't because my broker won't allow it, that may be true and it may be legit. Here's the problem. It makes them not want to work with you because I want to work with somebody who can do stuff, not who can't. Because all I was telling them is I don't have power. I don't have authority. And and people instinctively, if they're going to work with a professional who represents them, they want somebody who has power, somebody who knows who can, not somebody who can't. And so anytime you say I can't, that is what we call a resistance trigger. Just like no is a resistance trigger. It creates resistance. I can't is also a resistance trigger. Third stupid answer is to be sarcastic. Okay. Well, will you give us a cut of your commission uh, if we use you to buy our house? Well, here's, so here's some of the sarcastic. Well, okay, I'm happy to. Which room of the house am I going to get? Or something like that. How much equity of your house am I going to get? Or, uh, well, I'll give you a part of my paycheck if you'll give me a part of your paycheck. Those kind of, any, any answer like that, they, if they're really well played, they may be a little humorous and all that, but it's also kind of cheesy and it's kind of like, that's not the point. I just want to know if you're making all this money. Why don't I get somebody? Okay. It's only in real estate. Do we ever have to even negotiate our pay? Just, it's kind of a crazy thing, but it is the way it is. So let's talk about how you actually answer the question. Where I'm the buyer. I want a part of your commission. What are you going to say? So here is the best answer. And it's really simple. And I'm going to tell you how you answer it, and I'm going to tell you why we say each part of this. Okay, so just acknowledge the question. Hey, that is, you know, that's a great question, and I appreciate you asking. My commission um, really isn't part of the negotiation, just not. Can I explain why? Number one, because unlike many unskilled agents, my value is in getting you a better deal on the home you choose. See, the reason buyers work with me is because I help them get the house they want and actually help them get it. And I help them get it for the best price with the best term, meaning you actually pay lower for the pay less for the house and you have lower monthly payments every month for as long as you own the house. Now, that's a pretty nice bonus, right? That's a pretty nice benefit. Excellent. Now, and the best part of this all is, is that I help you get a great deal. And then the seller is actually the one who pays me for working for you. So it's really, you get a double win, right? Game over. Every single time that will end the conversation. And even if they still want to say, well, yeah, but, but they get it. And here's what they get. Now, here's what they get. There are three reasons why this answer is a better way to answer the objection. Number one, it, it actually legitimately respects and honors them and their question. We're just trying to get the best deal. We're just trying to figure out how do we get out of this with the most money in our pocket. And we figure we're going to pay all this money for the house and you're going to get paid some of it. Why don't we get some of that back as a rebate? Okay. Um, well, some agents, that's the only value they have is I don't really do anything for you other than do paperwork. So here, here's part of my commission to make you feel better. Okay. But when, when I answer say, you know, that's a great question. And I appreciate you asking you're respecting their and their question, and you're respecting them. And then you simply give a straightforward answer. And here's the straightforward answer. My commission are not part of the negotiation. Okay? Now, just straightforward. My commissions aren't part of the negotiation. And that ends the expectation that we can negotiate on commission. So I'm laying the groundwork. But it's not because I can't. It's because that's not the, the way I work. But if I just go like, well, yeah, but that's not the way I work. That's not my business model. Then it's about me and the way I work and my stuff. They ask about my commission. So I just say, my commissions are not part of the negotiation. And then I, sh and then I shift the conversation. Can I explain why? Now, that is a very simple yes or no question. And of course, they're going to want to know why. So they're going to say, well, yes. Awesome. Because, which is an influence trigger, which I train about in my coaching, 
because unlike a lot of the skilled age, unskilled agents out there, my value is in getting you a better deal for the home you choose. In other words, my value is not in giving you a part of my commission. My value is I actually help you get a better result. Okay. And then I, and in doing that, you contrast yourself to the other agents out there who aren't skilled, who aren't powerful, who don't know how to get them a house and how to get them the best deal on a house in terms of terms and price. And then you say, the reason that buyers work with me is because I help them get a better deal. And what are you doing? I'm, I'm, t- I'm now generalizing that it's not just you. This is the reason, the, uh, this reason people want to work with me, which implies I have value. People want to work with me, not because I'm cheap, but because I get them a better result. So we turn the conversation from the cost of me to the value of me. So now you're not talking about your cost, i.e. commission. You're talking about your value of why do people want to talk? Why do people want to work with you as an agent? Why? Because I get them a better result. I have more value. And so they're happy when I get the commission. Why? Because I help them get a better deal, which means they paid less for the house. I mean, they get to keep more money in their pocket and they get lower house payments because they got a better deal in the house, which benefits them month after month after month for the entire time that they own the house. Now that is a benefit. Right. That's a huge benefit. And then after all of that, guess who actually pays my commission? The seller pays me for working for you to help you get a better deal. So that's a double win for you. Right. Didn't cost you anything. And you get a better deal from working with me. So, number one, it respects them. Number two, it's collaborative, meaning it shares with them the benefit of working for you is their benefit. That, that I'm what I'm doing and the way I do it is for their benefit, not my benefit. It's not about me protecting my commission. It's about me helping them get a better result. And then the third thing it does is it makes you more valuable, not less valuable. It's not your commission that's valuable. It's you that's valuable. So it's not that your commission they want. It's you that they want. So after this conversation's over, they now have more loyalty and want to work with you more than they did before. So what are your thoughts? What experiences have you had on this? What, how have you handled it in the past? What did you learn from this video? Make sure you put those in the comments down below. And if you want to get all the best objection handling training in the industry, if you want to get the very best, join me at Agent Mastery Live 2021. The link is in the description below. Go to agentmasterylive.com. Get your ticket. You're going to spend three days with me. And we're going to spend a lot of the time talking about how do you use communication? How do you handle objections in a way that actually people make people want to work with you more. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If it's your first time here, play to win. All right, y'all. Feedback. What do you guys think about that? Is that smooth? You could do that. What did you notice? Give me some feedback about what you noticed on how he handled that objection. What are the things that stood out to you? Go ahead and unmute yourself. He didn't talk about his money. Yeah. He didn't talk about his money. I love that you walk away looking more valuable, being more valuable at the end. So awesome. Um, for me, it's um, the same as we would do uh, week over week. Um, acknowledge, reaffirm um, with the lead. Yep. Acknowledge, reaffirm, right? The repeat and approve, all that stuff. What else did you guys notice? How about tonality? How was the tone? It was very vibrant throughout the entire um, training or throughout the entire him explaining to the lead why he doesn't want to give them part of his commission. So he tried to sell himself, basically. Yep. The okay. tone was good. The rhythm was good. He knows what he's talking about. Absolutely. Um, Anna said he was establishing his power in his tone as well. Right. Like, so for this to work, guys, I want you to notice a couple of things. Number one is you need to know the script, right? You need to know the fundamentals of 
acknowledging, repeat and approve. That's why the repeat and approve is, is so awesome. You notice like we've talked about repeat and approve. And then I show you this video from this other trainer and he does the same exact thing, right? There's a reason why, you know, all skilled salespeople use these sort of tactics because there's a psychology behind acknowledging someone's concern, repeating it to them, making them feel heard and listened to. It puts the guard down where it's no longer me against you. It's us trying to navigate through this together, right? And repeat and approve, like I've told you before, is not only great in sales, but it's great in just building relationships with people, personal relationships, significant others, all those different things, because it lets people be heard and it lets them know that you hear them. Um, so that's number one, right, is the fundamentals, knowing the fundamentals of the script. Number two is being able to say it confidently, because if you were to say that same script and you sound all nervous because you haven't practiced it, it's not going to have the same effect on the client as if you came off confidently, uh, you know, and stuff like that. And you use great tonality and all that stuff. And you made the client feel reassured. Um, right. Because let me ask you this, you guys, like if you guys ever go out and buy something, raise your hand if you've ever asked for a discount on something. Have you ever asked for a discount on something? It could be anything, right? If you have a friend or someone who works somewhere, have you ever asked for a hookup? Anybody ever asked for a hookup? Hey, can you hook me up? Hey, can you give me a discount? Hey, can you do that? Okay, raise your hand if you've never asked for a discount ever in your whole entire life. Like you just, you don't ask for a discount, you pay full price every time. Some of you guys didn't raise your hand on either of them. So I just wanna make sure we got everyone participating. Okay. Those of you guys that raise your hand and ask for a discount, why do you ask for a discount? To see if you can get a good deal or just something off some money. <laughs> see if you can save some money, right? It doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah, doesn't, getting the best deal. Doesn't hurt to ask. Making sure you're getting the best deal. See if you can save some money. Are you still, if you're committed to buy, are you still going to buy anyways? Right. So for us, asking. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the price is, it could be a dollar. We're going to ask for a minute deal. So us, like for Jamaicans, for us, like Joe and I and Tony, it doesn't matter what it is. We're asking for a discount. Everything, everything we ask. So what's the, what's the best price? <laughs> That's our culture. Culture, right? It could be a cultural thing, right? It could be like, hey, I'm going to buy anyways, but it's just part of my culture and part of what I'm used to, to always ask for a discount right? Hey, you never know. You don't ask, you don't receive, right? Like that's, that's the thing. So you have to understand that a lot of times when we're dealing with clients, it's the same exact thing. Like they're asking just to see, Hey, can I save some money? Can I get a hookup? Can I get a discount? It doesn't hurt to ask. It's just part of my culture. A lot of times we will get offended by it, right? us as agents, we can get easily offended because you're like, well, I work hard. I've been doing this. And you're going to sit here and ask me for part of my commission and all this stuff. And then what happens is your emotions start to get into play. And then when you start trying to respond to that client, you're coming from a stance of being defensive and not just really understanding that people are going to ask for discounts regardless. Not everyone does. Like we saw the hand raise, right? Most of you guys did. There was a few people that said, ah, maybe, right? But it's just human nature that people ask for discounts. So I'm telling you this because if you are in this business long enough and you do a lot of transactions, you will get clients who ask for discounts. It's part of the business. So you need to already say in your mind, hey, people ask for discounts just because it's not personal. So I want everyone to first say that. People ask for discounts just because. It's not personal, not personal, right? That's just the bottom line. So I think it's important that you understand that going in because then you can say like, when you do that, then you're gonna come from a place of like, oh, this is just part of the process, right? I'm not gonna be on the defensive. I'm not gonna get upset. I'm not gonna ruin the relationship. I'm just gonna acknowledge and I'm gonna say, reiterate my value and I'm gonna stick to my ground. Um, Right. I had I had um, an agent and I'm going to give you an example. I had an agent that was interested in joining our team. 
and she wanted to ask for a higher commission split, like right off the bat. Still hasn't produced a whole lot yet, but she just said, hey, I'm like, they're offering this over here. Like, can you, can you give me a higher split? And I had two choices, right? I can like get upset and say, well, like go over there. If, like, you know, you go over there then if you, if you think they're better, right? Or I can just sit back and say, okay, I understand. She's just trying to get, you know, trying to make sure she gets the best deal. And I just need to acknowledge it. And I need to reiterate what the value is of joining our team, right? And that's what I did. And I just said, hey, you know, I understand you're trying to get a higher split. I probably would do the same thing if I were you. But let me tell you why agents join our team and what the value is of joining our team. You know, where your business is at right now and where I think we can get you, you're going to make a lot more money, even if the split is a little bit lower than what you think. Right. So I kind of broke the numbers down and went into everything. And at the end, she was like, no, nah, you're right. I can see that because I'm not doing any of that now. I don't have any of those resources now. I don't have any of those systems. I don't have any training. I don't have any coaching. I don't have any leads coming in. I'm just trying to figure it out on my own. So when I walked through that dialogue at the end, you know, she was like, yeah, I, I understand. I see the value, right? Now we just got to see if we're going to move forward and if she's, if they're a good fit, you know, for our team or not, but it's the same situation with the client, right? Like you got to just stick to your guns. You got to kind you know, politely acknowledge it and then reiterate your value. And then at the end of the day, you're going to have to put a, you know, put your flag down, right. And say like, Hey, this is how I run my business. And majority of the time when you do it that way, if the client does see the value in you and you've demonstrated value and you've serviced them, they're going to want to move forward. Right. Are you going to win them all? No, you will not win them all. There will be those people that no matter what, they're always like, they're just, it's just their human nature. They're going to negotiate the shit out of you until you just give them everything you can. Right. And at that point, you got to make a decision. Right. Do I move forward with this client? You know, and you got to evaluate. And here's my recommendation to you guys is look at the whole client dynamic. Right. Is it someone I want to continue working with? Is it someone that is coachable that I'm going to be able to coach and lead throughout the transaction? Because maybe this commission thing might just be a small thing. But other than that, like the client's super motivated. They're on it. They're showing up, they're not ghosting you. Like they really want to buy a home and, and you're like, hey, I can work with this guy, but he wants me to kick him back, you know, X amount for his closing costs. That's a decision you'd have to make at that point. But if the client is like a headache and like they're just all over the place, they're not listening and then they still want commission back, then you got to make a decision. Like, can I see myself still working with this guy? And what's the rest of the transaction going to be like, right? Um, I think that's important to kind of go over guys, just especially with newer agents, because we think we're, you know, we want to take everything. And just from experience, if, if you're getting pushback or difficulty early on, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to want to work with this client for, you know, 30, 90 days, right? Yeah. Because that energy, you only have so much energy. And what happens is if it goes towards a client, that's a little bit more difficult, it sucks away your, your energy for a client that will appreciate you. Yep. And, and the thing is like how people do one thing is a lot of times how they do everything. Right. So if they're a headache in the beginning, there might be a headache later on. Right. <laughs> the likelihood of them being a headache and being a difficult client, you know, is, is, is a lot higher. So those are things just to understand. I, I want to go deep with this because it's not just about like learning how to answer the objection. It's also learning how to be a, you know, a business person and think, you know, how can I make these calculated decisions in my business to see if I want to move forward with this guy or not? Because remember, if you give your time and energy to a certain client that is just driving you crazy and driving you nuts, it's going to affect other parts of your business. It's going to affect how you feel. It's going to affect how you show up with your other clients. It's going to consume time that could be taken away from you going out there and actually finding clients who value you and appreciate you, right? So you got to know your worth and you have to know your value. And you have to practice these things so that you do know your value, right? Because that's another thing is like, do you know your value? Do you know why you're a better agent? Do you know why, why agents should work with you? Do you know why you're on a good team, right? Or do you know what you actually bring to the table? It's not just saying like, it's not just saying the script, but if you don't really know that, or if you don't truly believe that, then how are you going to speak that confidently when you're dealing with the client? 
who's asking you for those rebates. Yeah. Jomo, what'd you got? Um, it's more of a question, Enrique. Um, would this be ethical? Because um, what I know some stores would do, for example, if they say that they're going on sale, they would set the price at a high point. And then they know in their minds where they want to go with the price. So they're like, okay, I want, I'm doing a, um, the item is for like $10,000, but I, I hike up the price for marketing and be like, hey, it's $3,000. But then they'll like anticipate the customer being like, hey, can I get it for 10? Even though they know it was for 10 at that time. So would it be ethical for like agents to set like their commission a bit higher knowing that the person might ask for a commission or a kickback and you will say, hey, I can go down to 5%. Yeah, would so- is, is that ethical? So that's a good question. That? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. And I think, I think we got to differentiate with its buyer and seller, right? So when you're working with okay. a buyer, the, the commission is going to be set by the agent who's selling the home, the listing agent, right? They're the ones oh. who are going to be offering the commission to you. Um, you can oh, okay. negotiate, but when clients are asking for a rebate, they're usually asking you to give part of your commission back that you're earning from the listing agent. Now, when you're selling okay. a home, when you're helping someone list their home and you're the one charging the commission to the seller. Yeah. Like at that point, it's, it's all negotiation. It's all in how you present the information, how you market it. And there is like psychology involved in that. Like, you know, a lot yeah. of listing agents are effective in like giving clients like three different options. There's a higher option, there's a middle option, and there's a lower option, you know, versus just saying, hey, my commission is this, you know, because oh. people, people always like options, right? So if you said, hey, I have a 7% option and we includes all of this, I have a 6%, it includes all of this, and I have a 5% and it only includes this, then yeah, oh, okay. you can use that strategy to, to get people to go with another one, right? So it's perceived value. Okay, um, got it. So let's role play guys, this thing right here. So I wrote down the script uh, or just the guideline for the script. Let me know if you guys can see this. Can you guys see it? Thumbs up. Uh, you. Right. So what I'm going to do is basically I want you to just kind of go down this line. So number one is step one, acknowledge and appreciate that they're asking you. Right. Repeat and approve, acknowledge and appreciate basically the same thing. You're going to let them know my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Unlike non-skilled agents, my value is negotiating the best price and terms. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal and the best terms. You can elaborate on that because of my experience, because of my connections, because of my negotiation skills. And the great thing is that even after I do all of this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. So you're getting the best of both worlds. You're not having to pay me and you're getting the best agent who's gonna negotiate the best price and terms. You get. I think Kevin Ward said you get a double whammy, right? You get a double whammy or you get the best uh, of, both world, of both worlds. And then I would always end it with a tie down. A tie down is basically you saying, like you getting them to acknowledge that that's what they want. That is what you want, right? Right, you want, you want someone who's gonna get you the best price, the best terms, the best deal, someone negotiates with you and you don't have to pay for that. That is what you want, right? So it gets them to say yes. Okay, so who wants to take a crack at this? I'll go. Alessandra, let's go, let's go. Okay, Alessandra. And feel free to take your time, right? You know, and we can maybe do it twice if you want. We'll okay, say the first yes. one, the practice round. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so Alessandra, um, yeah, you know, I definitely want to go with you. You know, thanks for all your, your hard work. But, you know, this other agent is offering, you know, $3,000 back from their commission. You know, can you 
give me part of your commission back, you know, and if so, then we can move forward on a deal. That's a great question, Enrique, and I appreciate you. I, I appreciate you asking. Um, but our my my commission is non-negotiable. Okay, keep, keep going. going. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, non-negotiable. Correct. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal and the best terms. And that's what I'm gonna do for you, Enrique. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna get you the best deal and I'm gonna fight for you, but my commission is non-negotiable. Okay, let's try that one more time, Alessandra. I want you to basically read from each step-by-step, step, right? Oh, okay, okay. It's laid out, right? And I think this is important to point out. There's a difference between saying my commission is not negotiable and saying, hey, you know, my commission is not part of the negotiation. So let me capitalize this. Well, one time they asked me and then I just blamed it on, on you. I was just like, oh, my broker, I don't, it's just, I wish I could give you like something, but my broker, my company doesn't allow that. Okay, well, then I'll just find the company that does allow that. So. <laughs> They you, see, were like, okay. you see, Kevin Ward said that that was one of the ways you don't want to answer it. You don't want to blame it on something else, right? Because at this point, what you want to do is you want to like say, hey, I understand why you're asking, but let me explain why I'm valuable and why my commission is not part of the negotiation, right? Yeah. So the first part of that video he said is that's, the, that's not the way you want to answer it, right? You don't want to just flat out say no. <laughs> you don't want to make up a story, right? You want to actually tell them why people work with me, right? And why they get the best deal. So it's important that you say it this way, not part of the negotiation, instead of saying it's not negotiable because not negotiable is like saying flat out no. Not part of the negotiation is just like saying like, you know, there's a process that we follow and, and my commission is not part of that process, right? So it's, it's, it's now you're like, you're making it about the process. You're not making it about me. You're not making it about you. You're making it about this process that we follow. Okay, um, makes sense. So let's try that one more time. And, and again, and again, the other part, Enrique, I mean, just because we're kind of breaking it down, the other part of can I explain why you're also asking permission, you're giving them power back, right? So that there, there's a lot of psychology behind the way this is written out, right? It's by you saying, can I explain why you're asking permission, which is huge. Yeah. So asking for permission gets them to now listen, right? And say, okay, well, let me hear why. And I wrote because right here, because he said because was a strong word. And I, I capitalized the words that I want you guys to accentuate, right? Because unlike non-skilled agents, right? My value is negotiating the best price and terms for you. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal and the best terms because of my experience, my track record, whatever you want to say. And the great thing is that after I do all of this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. You actually get the best of both worlds. That is what you want, right? So just go ahead and read, read off of this. Alessandra, you can read off of this. Let's yeah. Break it down slow. So Alessandra, you know, can you give me $3,000 back and, and I'll go with you. Enrique, I acknowledge and appreciate and appreciate your question. Um, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Yeah. Because unlike, because unlike non-skilled agents, my value is ne is negotiating and negotiating and the best price and terms. And when buyers work with me, they get the best deal and the best terms. I'm just reading it, but I know like that's fine. Oh, yeah. that's fine. Great. <laughs> and when by okay, and when buyers work with me, they get the best deal and the best terms. The great. Th Great thing is even. <laughs> yeah, a great thing. Sorry. The great thing is even after I do all of this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. So you get the best of both worlds, Enrique. Isn't that what you want? Right. Yeah, that, that what is what want? I want. Okay, now, now I want you to do it again without really reading off of this. Like you kind of get the gist of it, and just say you don't have to say it exactly as it's written. Just make sure you cover the points, right? So you can say it in your own words. I think the most, the one that's the most important is it's not part of the negotiation, right? Okay. 
But like, if you say like an and or a um, or like however you say it, that's natural to you, then it's going to come out a lot more confident. All right, let's go one more time. Uh, Alessandra, can you give me 3000 bucks from your commission and I'll move forward with you? I acknowledge and I appreciate it, Enrique, but my commit, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Uh, yeah, sure. Because non-skilled agents and because like, because unlike non-skilled agents, my value is not my value is to negotiate for you and get you the best price and terms. When buyers work with me, the, they get the best deal and the best terms. The great thing is even after I do all this for you, the seller is the one who's gonna pay me and you get the best of a world, best of both worlds. I work for you for free. Isn't that what you want, Enrique? Yep, that's what I want. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna make this easier. I'm gonna take this non-skilled agents part because we can dumb this down a little bit more. So because my value, right? Because it's just as effective. And here's the thing, Kevin Ward, He's a little more, uh, he uses a lot of words, right? He, you could tell he's a communicator, he's a presenter. You may not use a lot of words like him. You may just be a little more simple because you're, maybe you're newer, maybe your skills aren't that, that high yet. So what I would always say is like, keep it simple and speak it in the way that you can speak it. That gets the point across. Make sure you hit the bullet points, but like, it may be hard for you to like elaborate so much like someone like Kevin Ward, right? Cause he's done this a gazillion times. So sometimes like take the concept and just simplify it a little bit more. You still get the message across. Good job, Alessandra. Let's give it up for Alessandra. Uh, all right. Who wants to try next? I'll go. Let's go. Was that Jessica? Jessica. Uh, yeah. Give me 3000 bucks back and you know, I can work with you. The other guy said he would do the same thing. I understand and I appreciate you asking. My commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Uh, sure. The value that I bring is getting you the home you want and on your terms. Here's the best part is the seller pays for me and, or sorry, the seller pays for me to get you the best deal on the home. That's a double win. You get the home you want on your terms and you don't pay for my service. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh yeah, that makes sense. Okay, great. So Jessica basically got the point across, but she said it a little bit different, right? So that was perfectly acceptable, you know, because she said it in words that she's familiar with and she said it confidently, right? So good job, Jessica. Let's go. Who wants to try next? Dewey, let's go. Uh, Dewey, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, thanks for everything, man. Thanks for showing me these out these 20 houses. And, you know, I do want to move forward. But, you know, the other guy said he'd give me 3% back or $3,000 back. Can you can you give me some money back and then we can move forward? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I'm glad you asked. Uh, but on, uh, my commission is not part of the no negotiation. Can I explain to you why? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because my value... Uh, is nego uh, negotiating the best deal and the best price in terms for you. Um, when buyers work with me, they get the best deals because I negotiate the best deals and the seller are the one who pays me. So not only that you're not paying me, but I'm also getting the best deal for you. So it's a win-win situation for the both of us. Is that what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. All right, good job, Dewey. Keep practicing, man, and it'll it'll come off uh, confident, man. But that was a really, really good start. Uh, who you. else? Let's go down the line. Someone who hasn't participated. Uh, who said? Tony. Oh, Tony. Let's go, Tony, and then we'll go, Connie. All right. Tony, yeah. Uh, can you give me three thousand dollars back, and then we can move forward? <laughs> I can understand, and and I appreciate you asking. Uh, but my commission is not a part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Uh, sh yeah, sure. Okay, well, because my value is negotiating the best price and terms. So when buyers work with me, they get the best, they get the best deal and the best terms. Uh, the great thing is even after I do all this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. You get, you're basically getting the best of both worlds. <laughs> is that what you're looking for? 
yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Good job, Tony. Good job. Uh, let's go, Connie. Connie, I need $5,000 back. This is a $3 million house. We're going to get rich off this deal, you know, so I need at least five, 10 grand back and we can move forward. Hi, Enrique. Yeah, absolutely. I can appreciate a good deal. It sounds like that's what you're looking for. Is that correct? Yeah, I want to get the best deal possible. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to let you know, unfortunately, my commission is not part of the negotiation, but let me explain why. So my value as a buyer's agent is really to negotiate the best price and terms for you and really ultimately find you the best deal. So when, you know, buyers work with me, they choose me because I'm able to get them the best price, the best terms um, that they're really looking for. And I'm not sure if you know this, but in California, the seller ultimately pays the buyer's commission. So really, you're not paying me a single dime and really I'm negotiating the best price for you um, so really you're getting the best of both worlds does that sound like it'd be a good deal for you yeah sign me up let's go all right good job I like Can I add something to that he added a little bit you know to that you know and it, it, it came off really smooth uh who had it okay talking? can I add something to that yeah who was that it's me Thomas oh Thomas what's up so I would ask if you can explain why. You just said, let me explain why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. So if you ask, can I explain why? That creates the excitement. That creates the, oh, what's she going to say? Mm -hmm. Instead of just delivering the message. Yes. Yeah, I think that's that's a good observation is get permission from them, right? Because here's the thing too. Like if they're like, no, I don't want to hear it. I want 10 grand or else there's no deal, right? Like then at least you'll know at that point if, if they're if they're reasonable and willing to hear you out. So by you saying, can I explain why? And then they go, okay. Or they give you the head nod. Then you can go in. And then it's going to be a lot more effective because now they're actually listening to you at that point instead of just kind of like, let me explain why. Blah, 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 blah. So I, I do think the pause is crucial. And remember, guys, these are little things, but these are little things that will compound over time, right? It just makes you that much more effective and it drives the point home and it sets you up like as a position of authority, right? Like I'm asking you, can I explain why? And you're saying yes. So now I have the stage to talk to you, right? So it's a, it's a mindset thing, but good job, Connie. Let's see, who, let's, who hasn't went yet? We're gonna go down the line. We've got a couple minutes. Just FYI, everyone's gonna do it. So the quicker you raise your hand, the faster you do it. So Mai, let's go Mai and then we'll go Vivian. Vivian, um, I'm sorry, my, I need uh, 5,000 bucks back if we want to make this deal happen. That's a great question, Enrique, and I appreciate you asking. However, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Uh, yeah. Because my value is negotiating the best price in terms. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal in terms. The great thing is even after I do all of this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. You get the best of both worlds. That is what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. Good job. Good job, Mai. I'm going to change this because it's kind of redundant. When I say best price and best terms, uh, I'll say they get the best deal. You maybe say the best deal and save the most money or something. Save the most money. Something like that. Doesn't have to be exact, but the, the point needs to be there. Uh, Vivian, let's go. Uh, okay. Vivian, I need three thousand dollars back if we want to make this deal happen. I understand why you would ask that, Enrique. We all want a great deal, but my commission is not part of the ne negotiation. Can I explain why? Sure. Because my value is negotiating the best price in terms. Even after I do this for you, you aren't paying me. For my service the seller is which is a win for the both of us that is what you want right that's what i want all right let's go good job vivian uh who wants to go next let's go down the line down the line harold let's go harold cool let's do it harold thanks man you showed me 78 properties and you know if we're going to move forward i need I need 1% back. And, and Harold's ran into the situation, FYI, where he has people asking for money back. Uh, hey, Enrique, hey, totally understand where you're coming from. Um, just want to let you know my commission is actually not part of the negotiation. Can I quickly explain why? Uh, yeah. 
So I find that my value is being able to negotiate the best price and terms. And when buyers like you work with me, I fight to get them the best deal and save them the most money. The great thing is, aside from that, you don't even pay me anything at all. It's actually the seller who pays me. So you get the best of both worlds. And that's what you want, right? That's what I want. All right. Good job, Harold. Yeah, I, I like with Harold, like it's, it didn't sound confrontational at all. It was so cool, calm, collect. And I like that he put the word actually. He's like, you know, my commission's actually not part of the negotiation, right? Because I think actually kind of softens it a little bit, right? So that's a good tactic. My commission's actually not part of negotiation. Can I explain to you why? You know, and it's like, he's, it's, it still sounded friendly, right? It wasn't like him against me. It was like, now I'm willing to listen. Uh, okay, let's go. Who is next? Who raised their hand? Oh, Jomo, Jomo. Yes, sir. Jomo, uh, yeah, I can meet with your guy, you know, if they're willing to give me $3,000 back. Okay, got it, man. Sounds like you're looking for a good deal, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm looking for the best deal. Yeah, and I can appreciate that. But Enrique, my, my commission is not a part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Sure. All right, but see, because my value is negotiating the best price and terms, um, when buyers work with me, they get the best deal and save the most money. Um, and the great thing is that all, the, all that I'm doing for you, the seller is the one who actually pays me. So um, you wouldn't have to worry about that part. And um, we get the best of both worlds. And that's what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. All righty. All right. Good job, Jomo. Let's go. Who else? Teddy. I'm just going to start calling on people. Teddy. Um, my, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We started from the top. You got to acknowledge and appreciate me, right? Because that, that lets me know you're, you heard me and you're listening to me. So, Teddy, you know, thanks, man. Thanks for showing me this property. You know, I want to write an offer, but, you know, can you give me, you know, $5,000 back from your commission? Yeah, um, I, I appreciate you asking, Enrique. Uh, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Yeah, sure. My value is negotiating the best price in terms. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal and save the most money. The great thing is you, even after I do all that, oh shit, I read that wrong. Keep going, um, the seller is the one who pays me. You get the best of both worlds. Oh, this is what you want, right? Sorry, I, I didn't even see that part. Yeah, that's what I want. Let's try one more time from the top. So, uh, Teddy, I need $5,000 back, man, Let's and, and we can move forward. I appreciate you asking, Enrique. My commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Sure. Because my value is negotiating the best price in terms. When buyers work with me, they get the best deals and save the most money. The great thing is, even after I do all this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. You get the best of both worlds. This is what you want, right? That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so now I'm going to try one thing. I'm going to do an audible real quick. I'm going to unshare my screen because, you've, Teddy, you've heard it a few times already. So I just want you to say it off the top of your head, right? Just say what comes naturally to you. Acknowledge me. Let me know it's not part of the negotiation. Let me know why. Can you explain? Let's try it that way. All right. So, Teddy, yeah, I need $3,000 back on the commission. Can you do that, man? Oh, unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Can you give me $3,000 back, Teddy? For, totally for understand, Enrique. However, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Yeah. My value comes from negotiating you the best deals in terms. And if I'm willing to cut my commission, what makes you think I'm bringing you the best deal? That's true. But the great thing is that you're, you're not paying the commission and the seller is going to be paying my commission. So you get the best of both worlds. Is that, is that something that interests you? Or is, what do you, what do you think about that? So. That was good. good. Good job, by the way, Teddy. I put you on the spot, bro. So good job. Good job on just free flowing that because it was 
you hit all the points at the end, I would always, I would never say, are you interested, right? Because are you interested is like a yes or a no, but not really in your favor versus that is what you want. It's like, it's already an automatic yes. Cause everyone wants a good deal. Everyone wants to work with the best agent, everyone, you know, right? So you're trying to get someone to say yes, say a statement that only, they can only say yes to. Are you interested? I could still say no. So that is what you want, right, Teddy? Yeah, right? It's like, it's psychology. So it's reverse psychology. Good job, Teddy. Um, let's move on to the next one. Who wants to do it? Who hasn't done it yet? I can go. Let's go. Is that, was that Diana? Yeah. Okay, Diana. Um, yeah, you know, thanks for showing me all these homes. You know, I do want to write an offer, but, you know, are you able to give me 5,000 back towards from your commission? Oh, 5,000. Okay, I could appreciate that uh, question, Enrique. However, my commission's not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Sure. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So uh, my value is negotiating and my goal is negotiating the best price for you and the best terms. So when buyers work with, an, with me, they get the best deal, save the most money. So the great thing is that after I do this for you, the seller is the one who pays me. You get the best of both worlds. Uh, that is what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. All right. Good job, Diana. So one thing I have said, like, depending on who I talk to and how we flow, I just say, well, be careful with that because, you know, somebody is willing to give up their commission. They're leaving money on the table for themselves and their family and their team. Then they can also leave money on the table for you when they're negotiating the price. So they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. I mean, those little nuances, you can definitely add that in, you know, if you feel like you're in rapport with the client. So, yeah, that's something that you can add in for sure. Good job. Um, let's see who else, who hasn't went yet? Miles. Yes, sir. All right, Miles. Yeah, uh, love to move forward with you. Thanks for showing me the house, but you know, are you able to give me back some of your commission, you know, for on this deal? Hey, Enrique, um, I appreciate you asking and I appreciate that, but unfortunately my commission is not part of the negotiation. Uh, would you, um, Allow me to explain why. Yeah, sure. Well, it's because my value is negotiating the best price and terms. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal and save the most money. Um, the great thing is even after I do all this work for you, the seller is the one who pays me. You get the best of both worlds. So, where'd it go? I got clarified. This is at, at the end of the day, Enrique, this is what we all want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. All right, Miles, good job, bro. That was good. <laughs> Solid, solid, dude. I see the, I've seen a drastic improvement, bro, from like the last couple role plays to this one. Like solid, man. Thank you. Um, all right, who's next? Thomas Roscoe. Yo. Let's go. Uh, I need 3,000 bucks back, Thomas. Hey, Enrique. I understand you're looking for the best deal, right? So my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Sure. Because my value is negotiating the best price and terms. And when buyers work with me, they get the best deal and save the most money. The great thing is, even after I do all of this for you, the seller is the one who pays me and you get the best of both worlds. Is that what you want, right? Yeah, that's what I want. All right, good job, Thomas. Solid, solid. Uh, let's go, Thomas Fang. Show me how, show him how it's done, bro. I know you've been in this battle. I need 3,000 bucks back, Thomas. You're going to make a lot of money off this deal. Hey, Enrique, I appreciate that. Uh, you're letting me know that you want $3,000 back. Totally understand that. However, my commission is not part of the negotiation. Can I explain why? Oh, uh, yeah. Great question. So it's because of the value that we bring and negotiating the best price and terms is really what we're here to do for you. When buyers work with me, they get the best deal and save the most money. The great thing is that even though I do after, after I do all this for you, the seller is the one who actually pays me. You get the best of both worlds. And that's what you're looking for, correct? That's what I'm looking for. Sign me up. Job, Thomas. Uh, let's see who hasn't gone. Liliana. 
Let's go. Now, Liliana. I know. You come from Redfin. We're Redfin. This is all part of how they've got clients. They just give money back, right? And now you're in the other side where we don't give money back, right? So this is this is one that I think is is huge for you. Um, Liliana, yeah, you know, Redfin, you know, when I talked to you before, they said they were gonna give me three thousand bucks back, you know, can you still do the same thing? Um, I definitely appreciate you asking that question, Enrique, but um the, my commission is not part of the, the negotiation. Can I explain why? Yeah, sure. Well, there's a reason why I'm no longer at Redfin, um, because of the value that I bring. Um, and ultimately, my job is to negotiate the best price and terms on getting a home for you. Um, when buyers work with me, that's what I do. I get you the best deal and save you the most money. And the best part is that you don't have to pay me a dime. The seller is actually the one that's going to pay me to get you a great home. Awesome. All right. I get Does it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Okay, that is what you want, right? Yeah, that's that is what you want, right? And then sometimes, sometimes what I would throw into um, is like when I would say like save the most money, I would reference back how much they're asking for. Like I'm gonna save you way more than three thousand dollars, right? Right? Because if they're asking for three grand, like I'm gonna say, hey, I've been able to save clients this amount, right? I'm gonna save you way more than three thousand dollars when you work yeah. with me. Yeah, I actually came across this last week. Uh, the client that I called was like an agent from Redfin. Um, but I leveraged the fact that he was working with an agent that was going to give him a credit and that he had a horrible experience, which is why he was willing to work with me. And he, I'm not giving him anything. There you go, right? Because cheaper is not always better, right? Right. What did they ask? Like, well, how much more are you going to save me? Um, so the agent that he was working with, he had a really bad experience with, but he said, uh, she's going to be giving me a, a $2,500 credit. Can you match it? And I'm like, well, you know, I can't do that anymore. I'm no longer at Redfin. And it doesn't sound like this person is the best fit for you. Uh, you, I'm the best fit because of this, this, and this. And he was like, all right, let's do it. So. Thanks. Yeah. And I think here's the thing, like if you were to break that down logically and you could say, hey, Mr. Customer, I totally understand you want twenty five hundred like they were offering twenty five hundred. Now you want me to match it. But even though they were offering twenty five hundred, you had a horrible experience. They didn't get the property you wanted. They obviously didn't inform you and negotiate, which is why you're talking to me. Right. So we can see that even though that twenty five hundred was there, it didn't work out in your favor. Right. And the reason why you want to work with me is because I negotiate you the best price and terms. I'm going to get you the best deal. I'm going to inform you. I'm going to service you at a high level. The great thing is the seller pays me everything, right? So you get the best of both worlds. And that's ultimately what you want, right? And then you just stay quiet. And that's the thing is, is to make this effective, you need to stop talking at the end. You need to say, that's ultimately what you want, or that is what you want, right? And then shut up and you just look at them. And they're going to say, well, yeah, that is what I want. Great, let's go ahead and move forward. Let's get the offer written, all right? And that's the thing is, here's the close, because we gotta, we're on time now, is the close is that when someone has an objection, this is any objection, right? Not just this one. After you go through that dialogue and then you put it back on them, like that is what you want, don't start going back to talking about the same thing again. Because you would have just tied it up and put a nice bow on it and then you start going back and talking about the thing again, you just untied the bow. You got to now move to the next step, right? So if, if a client is ready to make an offer and he's asking for a commission, I'm going to answer it. I'm going to say, that is what you want, right? And I'm going to stay quiet because now I'm confident. And they're going to say, yeah, that's what I want. And then I'm going to get excited again. Great. Let's just go ahead and move forward. We'll go ahead and get the offer written and get you into this home. Don't go back to like, yeah, you know, and, and, and like talking about the commission thing again, because now you, all that work you did, you just messed it all up. All right, who learned something today? Give me a thumbs up. All right, in the chat, uh, not in the chat, in the Slack, I'm gonna send you guys a message. What was your biggest takeaway from today? Just respond to my, uh, to my message biggest takeaway hit reply biggest takeaway from today's script training
I just typed it in there, just hit reply to that one I just did. I'm gonna log off guys, hit reply real quick. Just drop a quick comment. Let me know if you need anything. Good job today, everybody. And if you didn't, right. if you didn't practice this, practice it on your own guys. I know we need, there was a couple people that didn't get it. Are you gonna send it? Or it's gonna be on the drive? The script? Yes. Yeah, I'll send it out as well. I'll send it in, in the Slack. Thank you. No problem.